Let's talk wheels, tires, and hubs. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of um, Industry Nine. Industry Nine is a company out of Asheville, North Carolina. I like to support the local economy, uh, local at least to North Carolina. So I Nine, Industry Nine, they make a good set of wheels here, and they're a little bit different. Um, these are the Trail 245s, uh, as you can see here. Um, these are some very stout wheels. They're not your standard aluminum spoke wheels. They're alloy spokes, and a lot of times if you look in the, the hub here, if you look at a standard laced uh, wheel, um, it'll be a, a J-hook or a straight pull spoke, but Industry 9 actually uh, machines their spokes with threaded ends on the hub. So they thread right into the hub, and they also thread into the rim which uh, as you can see these spokes are pretty beefy just compare them to some aluminum spokes on the other bike over here you can tell the difference so you can also tell the difference when you ride too because your wheel feels much firmer so it takes a little bit uh, to get used to but um, definitely some great wheels and the thing that makes a, a good wheel um, even better is a good hub uh, you want good bearings in there. You want good. Uh, um, the, you want the wheel to spin on the bearings as fast as possible without, uh, with as little friction as possible. Uh, and these hubs are pretty good. So I'll go to the back and I'll show you the the hub on the back. Um, pretty much the same wheel on the back, but um, if you look inside here to this hub, uh, these hubs are kind of. Uh, they're, they're pretty crazy. I think they have at least 72 points of engagement as a hub. And basically what that means is, is that when you spin that pedal, or not the pedal, but the crank, as soon as you apply torque to that crank, the hub is engaging fairly fast. And so that means all the power that you're, and torque that you're applying to that crank is being transferred to the hub. Um, if you have a hub that has less points of engagement, say for example 16 or 32 or whatever it be, the crank will actually move a little bit until it gets to that next point of engagement. It has some little paws um, that engage on, on the outer ring and so um, the more points of engagement, the quicker you apply the torque uh, to, to your back wheel, which in most cases is good, uh, especially for mountain biking. I think there's a point probably where you get too many points of engagement and if you take apart one of these hubs and you look at the inside ring, um, when you get too many points of engagement, they have to be smaller uh, in size to get that many inside the same diameter of hub. And so I think you sacrifice some, uh, um, uh, definitely sacrifice rigidity uh, for the number of uh, engagement points. So, there is a trade-off there. So those are the wheels uh, and the hubs. Now I'll talk a little bit about the tires that I'm running because you know everybody has their own special uh, variant of tire they like and I'm just running some basic Maxxis. Um, these are DHR2s in the back and uh, you can see down here this is the Minion brand DHR2. Uh, they're 2.3 inches wide. Um, again, this is a 27.5 frame, or what you know in the, in the industry is otherwise known as 650B. So, rear tire is a Maxxis DHR Minion 2, 2.3 inches. Front tire is a Maxxis Minion DHF, and it's also 2.3 inches. And I'm using the triple compound tire. So basically. There's softer tread at one point, there's harder stuff on the sidewall. Uh, so there's different compounds in the tires and it's basically just like any other tire that you would run on a car or a motorcycle. Um, you know, the softer the tread, the more, it, the more traction it gets on certain surfaces. Um, and the firmer, the rubber, the, you know, the sidewall may flex less and all that kind of jazz. So, but I like to run these. I will tell you this, um, the setup I used to run in the rear was an Ardent, was a Maxxis Ardent. Um, it was a 2.25. There's definitely more rolling resistance with these minions, um, which are more of a, I think, a more of an enduro style tire, uh, maybe even pointing toward of a, 
of a downhill, you know, obviously the DH and DHR, but um, they are very grippy and that means more rolling resistance and you will tell it when you get it out on the trail because you'll probably be doing more work uh, than the guy that doesn't have these tires. But uh, when you get into corners and you're going down and you're looking for traction and grip, um, I think these, these tires serve pretty well in most conditions, I would say. Um, dry to, to muddy to, to sandy to, to somewhat wet, they, they work fairly good. So those are the ones I run. All right, so let's move to the section where we talk about rider contact points. So that includes the seat and all of the things that support the seat, uh, the handlebars and grips, and the, uh, the headset mechanism along with the uh, the handlebar mount, which is commonly referred to as the stem. And then we'll move down to how you make this thing move, the pedals, and uh, I like to call them shin destroyers as they're otherwise known. So let's do that. And my favorite innovation in mountain biking in the last few years have been dropper posts. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about more of what that is uh, in this video. So um, standard seat stuff, when we talk about seat, this is a WTB Volt seat. It's standard issue stuff you'll see come from a lot of the um, manufactured Santa Cruz bikes. Um, I use the same one because it's a good seat. I also have it on another bike, um, which by the way, my other bike is a Santa Cruz uh, Chameleon. It's a hardtail. Um, it's, that, it's decked out with components similar and the reason being is that it's almost a parts bike for my daily rider. So I can, if I have similar parts on both bikes, I can easily uh, transfer parts when something breaks on here and I don't have to, to wait a few days to either source it from uh, the internet or from a local bike shop. So that's, that's the mechanism I use when I go into breakdown mode. So, so back to the seat, that's a WTB Volt seat. I gotta be honest with you, you know, I'm not too picky about seats and I'll tell you the reason why is I probably spend more time standing up than I do sitting down. It you know, obviously depends on the trail, but um, if you think about it, uh, you're in more control of the bike and you're, you're more uh, centered gravity wise um, and, and pivot wise when you're standing on your pedals and uh, unless I'm climbing or you know just on some flat trail where I feel like maybe saving my legs or whatever I will sit on the seat or if I'm doing something that requires me to sit on the seat um, like maybe doing like a, you know um, a, some, a wheelie or, or what, whatever it may be and then I'm usually on the very tip here and you can notice the angle of my seat it tilts down just a little bit from level so if you draw a horizontal plane across there it's not exactly level the nose of this seat actually angles down a little bit and I do that so that uh, when I'm climbing I can sit right on the end of that and it's not uh, kind of poking up in places where it shouldn't be. Um, so that kind of serves me well. Now the seat um, is mounted to a seat post that I love supremely. Um, again, you know, we talked about race face cranks down there. It's a Canadian company. Um, 9.8 is another Canadian company and they make a awesome dropper post, the fall line dropper post. And basically, and the way the dropper post works is, you know, ideally you want the seat not between your, your legs. You want to be able to move around on the bike. And what that allows you to do is to press this lever and the seat will go down uh, to, a, to a point, you know, anywhere in between that you want it. And, and basically it moves it out from under your butt and allows you to move on the bike a lot more fluidly um, and, and generally it just gets it out of the way for things so if you're for me I like if I'm hitting a jump or if I'm going downhill it's always down like I said I'm, I'm almost never sitting on the seat in those scenarios so this thing is is a godsend because uh, when you get through blasting your downhill run or if you're on a on a jump line or whatever it may be um, instead of doing it the old way where you would have to take this latch mechanism, uh, un, uh, loosen it up and then move the seat up or down where you want it uh, and you know if you didn't have it marked you'd be guessing where you would have to put it back at. It's pretty simple now so you just um, hit your level mechanism and the, and the seat comes back up to where you want it. So 
Uh, thoroughly love dropper posts. I'm sure there's much better dropper posts now. Probably just like I said, this bike is a, is a few years old, but um, uh, one of the best dropper posts at the time. The 9.8 fall line. I really recommend it. Uh, um, has served me well and has never failed me either. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I've ever rebuilt the inside of uh, this one. And I actually had this one and uh, a similar setup on my other bike as well. So that's the seat, the seat post. Um, let's talk a little bit about the other contact points. So we talk about handlebars and stem and then the headset. Um, I go with the, uh, these are the fat bar uh, Renthal and they're aluminum. And um, I believe they originally came 760 millimeters uh, wide. And I think I cut those down to 740 millimeters. Um, I like to use a pipe cutter. A lot of people like to use hacksaw. I think either one works. I think if you use a pipe cutter, you just have to be careful that you don't bevel out the ends. Um, and then you can't fit your, your grips on or whatever. But uh, for me, a big pipe cutter works beautifully and it makes a very, very clean cut when you're cutting your handlebars. And I gotta be honest with you, here in North Carolina, um, where I ride a majority of the time, uh, we have a lot of trees. And if you have super duper duper wide handlebars, you're gonna be catching up on trees quite a lot. The other thing is to think about this, um, you know, at some point, the wider your handlebars are, you know, obviously, the more uh, kind of control you get from your shoulders based on how wide your shoulders are. Um, but if you think about it also from the other perspective, the times where you have weight toward the back of the bike, uh, supporting your weight from your feet and then sometimes from your hands, if you get too wide of a bars, um, it's, like, it's like hanging yourself from a chin up or a pull up bar. What do you feel more comfortable with uh, hanging for an extended period of time, a super duper duper wide grip or a, a grip that's somewhat maybe just a little bit wider than your shoulders. You can do that experiment and that'll give you a decision, a base, you know, that'll help you make a decision um, how wide your handlebars probably should be for you. Uh, and, and you know, everybody can be different. And like I said, you get these handlebars, you can cut them to whatever you want. So um, it's super duper flexible in, in size in that way. Or you can just buy them and, and leave them like, like they are. Um, you can see over here on the on the DJ bike, on this Morpheus bike, uh, they're fairly wide and I haven't cut these yet. So uh, much wider, but I don't ride these on trails in, betu in between trees either. So um, that's the difference. All right, and so stem, I'm using uh, the uh, stem that's you know recommended with uh, Renthal Fat Bar bars is just a, your basic Renthal stem here. Um, and you can see that I am running a few spacers. So I cut the fork steer tube a little bit longer and I run about to what three, there's three, um, I wanna say maybe it's, uh, so it's probably about a third of an inch each one. So whatever that is in millimeters, um, maybe it's a, uh, uh, 30 millimeter space, three of those 30 millimeter, millimeter spacers. That gets my bars up a little bit higher. Um, and for the headset, you can see that I'm using the Cane Creek 110 headset. Uh, again, another North Carolina company um, based right outside of Asheville. Um, like I said, I like to support the local economy. This is a 110. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than the 40, but hey, um, the 40 works great too, and uh, like I said, you know, sometimes I prefer beefy uh, products. I just happened to have this 110 at the time, and so I just reused it. Um, but uh, it served served a good purpose so far. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we have on the handlebars. So I'm running the uh, the race face uh, the race face grips. These grips look like a rebranding. Uh, actually, I am running. So I am running Santa Cruz Palmdale grips. You can probably see it here, uh, the engraving on the end of the grip, uh, which to me, they have a good grippy feel and they're the right diameter for my hands. And then I'm using race face uh, lock-ons at the end here. So these lock-on from one side, from the inside, um, using that hex uh, screw here. But um, you can see that from the bottom. But I think also the Santa, Santa Cruz Palmdales comes with a similar clamp type. So they're, they're, they're pretty much the same. I think I just had these race face ones laying around and I, I ended up uh, 
installing those instead. So, so that covers everything with the handlebars. So let's talk about the third rider contact point, uh, which is the pedals. These are Spank Uzis, which are a little bit different than the Spank Spike. Um, the profile is a little bit thinner, so if you look at it from this aspect, the profile of the Uzi is thinner than the Spike is. Um, and you can see the screws that are in the pedal that grip to your shoes. I like to call them shin destroyers. Uh, if your foot slips off and the shin catches this thing, it's gonna wreak terror on your shin, wreak havoc, and you're probably gonna say some choice words. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. But anyhow, those are my pedal platforms. And um, you know, like I said, pedals are pedals are pedals. Uh, find a good set, find uh, ones that you feel comfortable with and that you can take on and off and move to different bikes. And uh, um, you know, you do have to do some bearing maintenance to, to these things after a while or um, this center pivot piece here can, can get wobbly on you. But uh, in general, the Spank uh, Uzi pedals are really good. All right, so that's it for my walkthrough of my daily rider. Um, until next time, skill up and ride.